All right, here he is. You know, you make me think about the way the comment before about how so many people still expect the woman to take care of the cooking, the kitchen department at home, but then go to a restaurant and look sideways at a female chef. How, how, how that makes sense. Right. Oh my God. What I think, and I've said this many times before, the woman needs to take the kitchen back because all of those male chefs will stand up and say, I'm inspired by my mother. And they're sitting oh, yeah. up in that, right? Mother, yeah. I, I mean, okay, if you're inspired by your mother, well, look to your right, look to your left, and there the women are in the kitchen. How about that? Right? And that's also, and so what you do, you get this thing, and but like, what do you think as a female chef? What do you think as, and some, and some um, female chefs like, but I just want to be known as a chef. And, but at the end of the day, I want to say, but you are female. And so, and with you being female comes something that you can turn into an asset. I don't want to be a male chef. I'm a female, but you are Blanche, you're female, you know? <laughs> so I, <laughs> <laughs> so I lean into that and, and what does my female energy, like, what are those assets? And I think, um, I have a balance of male and female energy. I am very intuitive. I am very nurturing when it comes to food. Um, yes, I'm competitive, but I also want to take care of you. And, and so a lot of men have to learn that they have to learn that. But when I eat somebody's food, and I always talk about Michael Simon. Um, I said, when you eat that man's food, you know he loves his mama because it feels <laughs> like that, that, that food that takes care of you. And then there's sometimes you like, oh, okay, this person is in an intellectual exercise. But I, I feel like as um, a black chef, I, I want to lean into what my soul and what my spirit wants to do and, and what makes me sing and what what mm. makes me feel closest to my ancestors, which, which is, is, is what feeds everything that I do. So let's talk about fame and how that has helped and hurt. Cause you were clearly a master chef before top chef. And then you propel to a whole nether level brand name. Everybody knows who you are. So how does that help and hurt? all these dynamics we're talking about in the kitchen and the restaurant industry for you? Um, I, I think it helps because it helps because what having this position and, and doing food television, it gave me the confidence. So more than clicking or anything, it's, it's confidence and confidence to be myself, confidence to, to go gray in an industry where they're like, uh, ma'am, you cannot go gray. And I'm like, sir, send me an email. Okay. So, um, you know, but so it gave me the confidence and, and I think that, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say that I am not aware of my fans and the people and, and people who, who see me on television, but it hasn't changed me. I look at all of those people as um, when, when somebody's like, oh, do you get tired of your fans coming up and taking pictures? I'm like, no, it's why I have a job. And so I, and I tell my husband, I said, you're my ambassador because the last thing I want, you know, is my husband to, to be flipping somebody off or get impatient when we're out. And I'm like, oh, Carla has an asshole husband, you know, <laughs> right. I'm like, you're my ambassador. And so it's, it's straddling and, and not getting, your head so big where you become a version of yourself, you know, like you're the brand and you're not this person. Um, and I think sometimes a lot of people want to like, I don't even know if I'm answering your question, but 
I would rather people not treat me like a celebrity. Really? I, I would. I would. But then there are there are times where I'm like, I have, and it's not the celebrity, it's just that I have been in this business long enough to know and I have enough experience that I want the respect that the experience has given me, not because I'm on television. So if I say yes to a job and um and and you're like, oh, hey, Carla, um, I want you to just come in as like um, a prep cook or whatever, knowing that they need somebody to think through produ- the production of this thing because I've done food television. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to do that because I can't step into doing this job without bringing you all of my experience that I've had. So I'm going to give you all of my knowledge, which you're not going to pay for, which means I'm not going to take that job. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's not my celebrity. It's, it's the confidence in myself and my worth as a person, as a black woman, you know, so that leads first before all of these other things. And, and maybe the celebrity and the people that I've been around and I see how, and, and I have to say, even the white male, sometimes you learn how to be, in this, in this quote unquote game because they have the confidence. And as a black person, you're like, okay, if relationships are important to us and maybe with European of of white bodied people, the thing is really important to them. Well, I still need to understand the game of the thing. And maybe they need to learn from me the game of people. So, okay. Elements of being a chef, because if I said, you know, Basketball players got to be able to shoot, run, jump, read a defense, you know, free throw. These are the elements that it takes. Okay, so what are the elements that it takes to be a great chef? So chefs need to be able to, I mean, there's certain techniques that you just need. You need to know how to, you need to be able to taste. There's just certain techniques of cooking. You need to know um, cooking techniques, searing, braising, you know, making the mother sauces. You need to know all of that. But in terms of being a chef and being a manager of a kitchen, you need to be able to delegate. You need to be able to train. You need to be able to understand what one person can do better than another person and where to put them in your kitchen so that your kitchen runs smoothly. You need to be able to create um, a dynamic where the front of the house and the back of the house understand that they have to work together. And it comes from you. A lot of times, I mean, they are the captain. It comes through the chef to everyone else. Um, I think that you need to be able to motivate people. A lot of times uh, the the people who come through the kitchen aren't necessarily educated. I mean, I, I, back in the day, it was like the restaurant was the, the land of the misfit elves. And so you need to be able to take somebody who is a blue collar, it's a blue collar job, right? You need to be able to take somebody who maybe didn't graduate, doesn't have a GED or whatever, and, and put them next to somebody who went to culinary school and somebody who is living in the hood and who has all of these situations going on and they, they came to work, but, uh, things were like roped off or whatever, you know what I mean? Somebody died, but they, they were a little late, you know, all of that. You need to be a social worker. You need, to be, you need to be all of those things and working in restaurants and working in food. And it really is about putting people together and seeing how someone shines. I got, you talked about all that and that was brilliant. I want to dive back into that for a second, but you didn't even get into like the relationship between you as the top chef in the house and the guests who are coming in the regulars, the tourists, the the first timers, there's a, right. There's a whole relationship between, and a person like you, they're coming to see you because they saw you on TV. So they want to see you come out at least, right. Come to our table or walk through the, 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 the dining room or something. 100%. And you know, it's, it's interesting that you brought that up because back in the day before there was a top chef or a celebrity chef, the chefs were in the kitchen. And at the end of the night, the chef might come out. Um, and I think that some chefs are better for their personalities. They prefer to be in the kitchen. They don't want to come out front because that requires some kind of, um, social skills. 
mean, I don't mean to say, <laughs> so, I, I don't mean to imply that chefs don't have social skills, but when you are a personality, it is required that you have some kind of rapport with people, with your guests in the restaurant or outside of it. And because you are an ambassador of all of those people who work for you at that point in time, right? So it's really important to come out and not only sort of have FaceTime, but you also want to, it's a time to tell your stories about your food. You know, it's like the shelf talkies. And so they understand, if they understand you, perhaps they will understand also your food. Um, I love talking to people. I love coming out and talking to people. And, you know, and sometimes if we have a chance, I'm like, hey, I I'm making this thing. Do you want to try it? Do you want to taste it? You know, these off the menu things. I say, what do you think? Right. I love that. So exciting. So exciting. So wait, within the, you started to allude to this, but I want to go deeper within the culture of the restaurant. It really does break down that there's two cultures, right? The front of the house, a certain sort of person is attracted to the front of the house. And there's certain skills that are inculcated in them in terms of talking to people. Right. And you remember as soon as you cross the door to go into the kitchen, it's like you've gone into an entirely different world, an entirely different country. And it's, it's not necessary. It's, it's, it's war. It's loud. It's yelling. You know, the, the way you relate to the table is entirely different than the way you relate to the people on the line. And, but, but those two cultures, the front of the house and the back of the house, the kitchen have to relate and they have to work together, even though they have, different pay, different backgrounds, different relations. Right? So how do you make sure that that flows? And, and, and keep in mind that I'm talking about this from having worked in restaurants, but I don't own a restaurant. Um, but I think this day and age, there are a lot of open kitchens. So you still mm -hmm. have to have the sense of, it has to be a quiet kitchen. I personally would not work in a kitchen if somebody's yelling to me. I remember when I, um, the first kitchen that I worked in after culinary school, I, I said, um, I would say to the chef, are you a screamer? And I don't mean personally, because I, I'm like, I, I know how I need to work so that you would get the best job out of me. And so when people work with me, I tell them I am not a screamer. This is what I expect. I'm not a micromanager, but I expect you to do your job. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very direct and very quiet in how I run a crew. And if there's somebody who I said, if you need me to scream at you to get you to do your job, this is not the place for you because I, I'm not going to be that person. And I'm going to be looking at you like I could, I could give somebody a look. And also this is what I love. I knew that my height was a, a factor and a plus and an asset in the kitchen. Cause I'm, I'm six feet tall and I knew girls, women who were like five, five and they were working in a kitchen. They would get like hit with hot sheet pans and everything like, you know, on the elbow, the shoulder. I'm like, what? Because they, they were working in these kitchens that they felt were these premier pedigree kitchens. Cause that's what they wanted to do. But they didn't think about the culture that they were stepping into. But those are the questions that I asked. Thank <laughs> you.